what they are precisely we're not quite sure. They also have powers to look at fraud. What they are, we're not quite sure. For centuries, it has been the British citizen's most basic right to vote in 100% of the members of parliament who govern their country, or alternatively, vote them all out and sack them if they don't perform. For instance, the basic principle that one Westminster parliament can always change what the past parliament did. That's the core of democracy, that you can elect a new parliament and then you can have a new law. This core doesn't exist in the EU and it doesn't exist with the constitution we are building now. As more and more EU-sanctioned taxation hits the British taxpayer, from local council tax increases to higher national insurance levies, how many even appreciate the true price of what European Union membership has actually cost Britain? People don't realise that the cost to Britain is £1.3 million pounds per hour, every hour, every day, every year. And the way that figure will go is upwards, not downwards. We every year give them a nice, big, fat Christmas cake, costing billions of pounds. And they decide how many crumbs they're going to give us back. They don't flannel me, but unfortunately, they're flanneling a lot of people in this country. The Europeans have far higher levels of taxation. There'll be VAT, can you believe it, on food. There'll be VAT on house purchase. There'll be VAT on public transport. There'll be VAT on children's clothing. There'll be VAT on funerals. There's no limit to the greed of the bureaucrat. And the other point, of course, is the sheer financial point, that this place is thick with institutional corruption. You could now buy a cheap airline ticket to come to Strasbourg for about £45 return. When you get here, you're reimbursed nearly £800 for the cost of that flight. Now, this has been going on for the last 20 years, and of course what's happened is that our members of the European Parliament simply haven't been talking about it. The system is fraudulent, it's rotten to the core. The EU's pilfering of airline expenses and the extravagant waste of taxpayers' money on schmoozing and boozing MEPs into compliance is, of course, serious enough. But there's a lot more. There's the endemic corruption that has existed at the heart of the Union from the outset. The whole thing is corrupt to the core. The scale of the corruption, the figure given in the House of Lords Committee, was that it was £6,000 million worth of corruption in a single year. Their accounts haven't been signed off for the last eight years. Why would anyone wish to be governed by something which is utterly corrupt? It is beyond belief. And I think quite honestly, all these MEPs in Brussels, uh, we are gonna have an awful job trying to break this down simply because they're on a cushy little number. And that has always been the problem with uh, not only the MEPs, but our own government. They're too busy feathering their own nest. In 1998, a man called Paul van Boytenen, who worked in the European Commission, decided that fraud, waste, mismanagement, corruption and nepotism had become so bad that no longer could he hold his peace, and he went public and became the first whistleblower. It turned out that, in fact, all of his claims were right, and the entire European Commission were forced to resign in disgrace. The president of that commission, Jacques Santerre, is now here as a member of the European Parliament for Luxembourg. And Commissioner Kinnock, who was one of the 20 that had to resign, is now a vice president of the European Union and has been put in charge of sorting out fraud. Well, how well has he done? Well, there's now another whistleblower. Her name's Marta Andreassen. She went to Commissioner Kinnock she said, look, I'm sorry, Commissioner Kinnock, but I cannot sign off these accounts. You're using a cash-based system. You're not using double-entry bookkeeping, which incidentally was invented in the late 14th century. 
She said, I cannot sign off these accounts as being a true and accurate record of the EU's finances, and for her trouble, she's been suspended pending an investigation. Everybody talks about reforming fraud within the European Union. I think this whole system is so rotten that it's now unreformable. It means that you will be ruled for the first time by people you cannot sack. Why would anyone to do that voluntarily? It's the politicians of all three major parties who are all hell-bent on ever closer union. Ever closer union, in fact, means ever closer strangulation. Being part of the European Union will mean Britain will permanently lose control over her armed forces and foreign policy. The new European army, so enthusiastically pushed by France and Germany, in effect threatens NATO, the organization that has kept peace in Europe for the past 50 years. They can use our armed forces, the Crown forces, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force in the European Rapid Reaction Force. And imagine our forces being under the command of some perhaps French or German general. And then there's the Euro. Joining it will be irreversible according to Hans Tietmeyer, former president of the German Bundesbank. Monetary union is a path of no return, he states. No subsequent revision or withdrawal of any kind is either legally or politically provided for. Britain's economy traditionally tracks that of the United States because of our heavy trading on the dollar. So what would be the effect of joining the euro and tying Britain's economy into this one-size-fits-all arrangement with the other nations of the EU? Brussels wanted to know too, which is why in October 1990, Britain joined something called the European Exchange Rate Mechanism, a dress rehearsal for the Euro and Monetary Union, which effectively locked the British pound into other EU currencies. 23 months of chaos followed. British business suffered its worst recession in 60 years. 100,000 UK businesses went to the wall. Unemployment doubled from one and a half to three million. More bankruptcies were filed than in any previous two-year period ever.